Hey guys, it's Gaz and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for supporting our last 11 videos. Today's video is the last one in season five, but don't worry, I'll be back soon with uh, even more bigger and better recipe videos. Today's video is one of my favorite dishes to use up leftover risotto. It's arancini, or in my Italian accent, arancini. <laughs> uh, I love these risotto balls. Um, it, it's just a great way of using up leftover risotto. Uh, getting some nice crispy breadcrumbs on the outside. It's just really good. And I'm actually going to be filling them with my homemade uh, mozzarella inside too. So they're going to be great. This is how to make it. First up, that leftover risotto, and I've used the same recipe that I did in season five. I made this the other day, and it's still fresh for me to make it into arancini. So let's get it into the bowl. There's around three cups here. Next into the bowl for a little bit of freshness, I'm gonna add some chopped parsley and some lemon zest. If you want some knife skills tips, go to my knife skills video. Add the parsley to the bowl. Add the zest of half a lemon. You can also use preserved lemon chopped up really small, which would add an amazing flavor. And now it's time to add three tablespoons of breadcrumbs into the mix, just to help it hold together. However, if you want to keep it gluten-free, I recommend using just gluten-free breadcrumbs, or you can even use chickpea crumbs like I did in my fish or fillet burger uh, in season four. Add three tablespoons of panko breadcrumbs to the mix. Then mix really well. Right, it's all mixed up nicely. I have a pan of vegetable oil heating up behind me, ready to fry these. You can also bake them, but you get a much crispier uh, risotto ball if you fry them. So get a lined baking tray, and we just need to boil these up. Adding a little bit of water to your hands helps stop them from sticking. Grab a tablespoon of the risotto mix and form it into a bowl. Just as a rough gauge, a golf ball size shape is perfect. Just make a little hole in the middle and I'm actually gonna fill this with my homemade mozzarella. You can find the recipe in my book or in the pizza recipe that I did in season three, which seems like ages ago now, but it wasn't actually that long ago. Spoon or pipe in a small amount of your vegan mozzarella, then close up the risotto ball. So I'm gonna do the rest of these now, then get them coated and fried. But before I do, I'm gonna show you how to make the most amazing dipping sauce to go with these. So I'm just finishing the last one. These are on the big side. This is a tiny little one to go in the mix, but I don't wanna waste anything. You can make yours smaller if you prefer, but I like getting plenty of the mozzarella in the middle. To make the dip, add six tablespoons of vegan mayonnaise to a mixing bowl. To the mayonnaise, I'm gonna add two roasted peppers. I've got a yellow and an uh, orange one. Just gonna peel off the skin and get them in. Peel and deseed the two peppers, then chop finely. Add a tablespoon of chipotle paste. Add four finely chopped sunblush tomatoes. Finally, to the dip, add some salt and pepper. Mix well and set aside until you're ready to serve. Right, now it's time to coat the risotto balls. I'm using some panko breadcrumbs, as I mentioned before, and to help them bind to the balls, I'm using some chickpea flour, which I'm just gonna mix with some water. So I've got around half a cup in here. I'm gonna add it, add around a quarter of a cup of water just to make it sticky. Right, so I just finished mixing the chickpea flour and water mixture. Now all we need to do is dip the risotto balls in that, then into the panko breadcrumbs, and that's it then they're ready for frying. Grab a risotto ball, then place into the gram flour. Carefully lift it out when it's covered, then coat in the panko breadcrumbs. Press the crumbs onto the ball using your hands. Continue until you've coated all of the balls. So another way of making this even more sort of cost effective and, uh, and waste saving is by using up old bread. And that slightly stale bread, which is kind of dry, can be blitzed up and made into these breadcrumbs. Uh, so that's another way of keeping it, the cost down and saving food. 
Right, the risotto balls are now coated. Just gonna pop those aside, have a good clean up, and then we're gonna get them fried and serve up. So my oil is nearly hot enough, ready to put the risotto balls in. At home, you can use a deep fat fryer. Just set it to around 180 degrees Celsius. If you are using a saucepan like this, only fill it halfway um, because we want to minimize any risk. Because as soon as we put those risotto balls in, it will rise. So that will be fine. It should be really safe. I'm going to use this little risotto ball as my little dummy and see if the oil's hot enough. It should be by now. Yeah, it's starting to bubble and it's starting to rise to the surface also. So it's hot enough now. I'm going to get a few in. Don't overcrowd the pan because it will cool it down and the oil will rise too high. So just a few at a time. Fry until golden and crisp. This should take around three to four minutes. Once golden, remove the risotto balls using a spider and place on kitchen paper to drain off any excess oil. Oh wow, look at these. Beautiful and golden. Let's get these onto our paper here just to drain off any excess oil. First, a little sprinkle of salt and pepper. And I'm gonna fry off the rest of them. Whilst the rest of the risotto balls are cooking, grab your mayonnaise from the fridge and get your serving plates ready. I've also got some crispy sage leaves and if you want the recipe for that, check out my risotto video. And there it is. The arancini are done. I'm gonna get this plated up. Simply, just like this. I just love how rustic they are. Well, they actually look pretty perfect, really, so they're not kind of rustic, but I've made it look rustic on this board. I'm gonna sprinkle over some of these crispy sage leaves. These will add a nice crunch and earthiness. After all, this squash inside the risotto, so it's gonna taste, uh, it just works so well, sorry, with the sage. And just sprinkle over some chopped sunblush tomatoes. And there we have it. There is my arancini using up old risotto that I made a few days ago. And if you want that recipe, just go to my risotto video. These are gonna taste incredible. In fact, I had that little one that you see me make. It tasted so good. So I can't wait to dig into a big one and dip it in some of the sauce. So let's give this a try. Did you see how stretchy and melty that mozzarella on the inside is? It's amazing, so let's taste this. Mm. Mm. That is amazing. Mm. I could literally snack on these all day, that crunchy breadcrumb coating, the beautiful, sweet sort of risotto because of the butternut squash and then that dip is amazing i love the stretchy mozzarella inside who'd have thought this is vegan i'm really pleased with this make sure you try it thank you for watching all of my season five videos don't forget to like share and comment on this one uh, hit the bell if you want to be part of the notification gang and please subscribe and thank you for all of you that have um, bought my book it's still available on amazon now to buy it would be great if you can continue to support me. So thank you so much and you have to try this.